everybody. Welcome back to It's the Little Things podcast. I'm super excited today because I have Danielle, who was in my small group in high school, which is so funny that it's kind of come full circle because I was literally talking about my small group the other day. And um, so I thought it was super cool, but I'm super excited to have Danielle on today. Um, so this is, I think this is going to be a really good one. And uh, sorry about the Blue just knocked over my ring light. Um, that's okay. I'll pick it up later. Anyways, um, Danielle, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your testimony? Hi, my <laughs> name is Danielle. I go to OU, so I'm a sophomore here in Norman. And as India said, we met in high school at our church, and we were in a small group together. And so... Just starting off with my testimony, I grew up in a Christian home and Jesus dying on the cross is kind of like a fact to me. I didn't really fully understand like the weight of his sacrifice until I went on a mission trip the summer before high school started. And like leading up like in middle school and before I went on that mission trip, I was not following the Lord at all. I was lying to my parents. I was dating a boy I should not have been dating, getting suspended from school, not 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 doing well. <laughs> and so I was kind of like dragged along on that mission trip because and I didn't really want to be there because I thought that like it would be impossible for the Lord to use me when I was so imperfect and so far from him. But I saw him use me in so many different ways. He used me to like pray over people, lead others to Christ, lead worship, and just be a light in that dark community. And it was during that week that I realized that I don't need to be perfect in order for the Lord to love me. I don't need to strive to find his love because Jesus already paid the price for that. And so having faith that the Lord could love me and that I didn't have to be perfect before I went to the Lord with my problems. I didn't have to have everything figured out in order to be a Christian. Like coming to that realization is really what started off my relationship with the Lord because before that I've really only viewed Christianity as like a religion, not a relationship, but getting to like be close to the Lord and getting to understand that he celebrates my small victories, no matter how small that they are, is what really pulled me into that relationship. Of course, after that, it was not all rainbows, butterflies, sunshine. I, during high school, I really, really struggled with anxiety and depression. Um, I got to a point where I had to go counseling four times a week. I was very, very not okay. And I prayed to God constantly. Why won't you take away my anxiety? Why won't you take away my depression? because I knew he had the power to. And so it was really hard for me to understand that like he has the power to take away my pain, but if he's an all loving, like in a good God, like why wouldn't he, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I read second Corinthians 12 that it kind of hit me. So I'll read that. It says, so Paul is talking and starting in verse seven, it says, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So struggling with my mental health 
forced me to solely rely on the Lord. Mm-hmm. I would not have been able to get through that time of my life if I wasn't so like relying on the Lord. And I, I saw him give me peace where before there had been turmoil and I was like racked with anxiety. And I saw him be the light in the midst of my darkness and be the power in the midst of so much of my weakness. And so that's what really solidified my relationship with God was being forced to rely on him during that hard time because I learned that no matter what, I can run to the Lord. And I learned that he is sufficient for me and that if I am trying to validate myself, trying to um, just find worth and find happiness in other things other than the Lord, I will be left uh, empty Mm -hmm. time and time again. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. um, That's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on here because your story is so good and you have so much wisdom. And so I was like, I need to have Danielle on here. And um, so I just remember, um, you know, in our small group in each one of us, there were about um, four or five, depending on the day, but just having everybody's stories be so unique. And I think that's one of the coolest parts about, you know, all of us coming together in a small group is because we all have such unique situations, but we all are learning the same lesson in that we have to rely on God. And so I thought that was super interesting and um, that you went through something completely different than I did. And both of us came to the same conclusion that that's the only option that we have. And so I thought that was super cool. And um, I love how you said you thought that you had to be perfect to come to Christ because that's kind of how I feel sometimes. It's just like, you know, I know I'm sinning and I'm in this sin and how am I, how can I come and lay all of this down at somebody who's perfect and who conquered all of this? And so it's such a hard concept to like wrap your mind around that, you know, we're not going to be perfect regardless of what we do. So, you know, we try our best, but at some point you just got to give up and give it all to God instead of just trying to act a certain way. Yeah, because it's so opposite from everything that we learn, like in this world, like you have to prepare before you go to class every day you have to be prepared for your job you you know like you just and in relationships you have to do certain things in order to be like for it to be like a good relationship and so it's it's crazy and it's so backwards that you can just go to the feet of Jesus and lay down everything no matter how messy and no matter how chaotic and like he will be there for you yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, it's so, it's so refreshing to think that we don't have to prepare. We don't have to. The thing that I struggle with is I don't know the Bible. Like I think I should know it. Like I'm like, I think, I feel like I should have so many verses memorized and so many stories known. And I was literally just talking on the podcast the other day about how I don't have these all memorized, but you don't need to, like, you need to constantly be learning and constantly be striving, but that's not what he asks you to do. All he asks you to do is just come to him when you're, you know, at all times. And so I think that is cool that you say, like, you don't have to prepare. So I think that's really interesting. Um, But so my next question for you is um, what is someone or something that has helped you on your walk with Christ? The biggest thing that has helped me through my walk with Christ is community, like hands down. Like in high school, our small group helped me so, so much because they were people who I could be vulnerable with, who would keep me accountable and who would continually lead me back to Christ. And so I have been so blessed to find that same community here in Norman. Mm -hmm. And so just having friends who continually ask me, what has the Lord been teaching you? Who pray for me, who 
keep me accountable and make sure that like, I, I like girls that I can share about like my sin struggles and what I'm going through and won't judge me, but it will instead like point me back to the Lord. We were not created to do this thing alone. Like that's why God created Eve in the garden of Eden so long ago. And so just having people who hold me up is what has really, really helped me. Yeah, for sure. I think that's one of my biggest things too, that, oh my goodness, blue is being a complete mess right now. Um, So my apologies, everybody. Hold on. Okay. All right. He had his feet all tangled up in the microphone cord. Um, anyways, um, community is my biggest one too. It, I think it's so important. Like you said, we're not made to do it on our own. And I know I couldn't do it on my own. I'm too much of a social butterfly to do anything on my own. So <laughs> living by myself now is like a huge adjustment. And it's so weird because I'm like, now I have to do everything on my own. And I think that's what he's trying to teach me is like, I have done everything with so many people all the time. Like um, the past year and a half when I was at school, uh, I had a whole team that I could just be like, hey, do you want to go get lunch? And now I'm like, no, I have to do that by myself, which is almost to me, it gives me kind of like an anxiety when I go out by myself. And so I thought it was really um, interesting because I think I relied on community almost too much that he's like, yes, I want you to use community, but I don't want you to use it as a crutch. And um, because I I use it as just, you know, when I feel lonely, I'll go to them instead of going to God. And so, um, which I think both is important, but just like a good balance of both. And um, so I think that's what he's teaching me right now, but I definitely agree that community is so, so important. And I just love having people to go to, like you said, because I had a group of girls that I went to passion with and like that group of girls would are just, I relied on them all the time. And it was so easy to talk to about our relationship with Christ. So I think that's awesome. And, you know, I think I'll find that group here in college station. So I think that's super cool. Yeah. Giggum. <laughs> what? Yeah. I transferred um, this semester uh, to college station. No. Yeah. <laughs> I know the listeners who do not know. Okay. I come from four generations of Aggies. <laughs> all of my, my dad went to a all of my aunts and uncles and all of my cousins who are old enough to go to college all go to a and And I broke the trend and went to OU and I do not hear the end of it at every single family <laughs> gathering. I love it. I think it's so funny because I'm a first generation Aggie. So it's like completely different. Everybody's like, oh my goodness, Giga, blah, blah, blah. And it's so funny. Oh That's God. hilarious. Just I totally wait. forgot about that. Just I knew wait. you were deciding where to go, but I couldn't remember. I didn't know that. You, I forgot that you were a fourth generation. Yeah. Just wait till you go to football games. It's going to be <laughs> I know I'm super super excited um yeah I it's super it's very different here than obviously Moorhead was very was very small in Moorhead so um A&M is massive that's why I couldn't go there because it is so just, just way too big for me yeah I think it'll be um probably a shock at first when I get it, start getting into stuff but I think it'll be good because I have such a huge personality so I think it'll be a perfect place for me. Cause I'm like, I need yes. to, I'll need to, I just want to meet tons of people. I think it'll be good because at Moorhead, like we didn't get to meet a ton of people because we COVID and all that stuff, but COVID apparently doesn't exist in Texas. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll say it. <laughs> um, anyways. So um, I love community and I think that's so important. And then my other question for you is about mustard seed moments. And um, a mustard seed moment is basically like that little seed of faith that has just completely transformed your life since then. Um, So what is your mustard seed moment? I think it goes back to what I was talking about before. I think my mustard seed moment was realizing that 
I don't have to have it all together in order to go to the Lord. And having faith, it was so hard for me to have faith that the Lord would love me regardless of like my mental condition and regardless of my sin struggles, because I have had so many people like walk out of my life. And so the beginning of my relationship with God, I was very guarded. I was very guarded because I was so used to people like walking out of my life. And I was so used to people not um, loving me regardless, not loving me unconditionally. I was so used to people not loving me unconditionally. And so having faith that God's love could be unconditional and that I could let down my walls was a really, really big mustard seed moment for me. Yeah. Um, I, ta- I was talking about that the other day about how hard it is to wrap your head around an unconditional love when you've been a part of a love that wasn't unconditional. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard to just um, accept it because you almost want to just be like, you know, I know, like, I can imagine what unconditional love is, but I don't actually know what it is. And, um, which is so crazy because I have so much family that loves me unconditionally. But then, like I said, like that one person can completely change your whole outlook on unconditional love. And so I think it's so important to like learn that. And it takes time. I mean, it's not like a one and done oh, yep, he loves me unconditionally. Like, to me, it's, you know, something that you have to grow about and you have to read about. I think that's what's so important about the Bible is you have to stay in the word to know who God truly is because our minds are just going to create who we think God is constantly. I think um, one of the things I've learned is to not listen to the God that social media portrays. Oh, for sure. He is so different than that. And so I've just had to separate myself from that and, you know, try to determine what I believe and what the Bible says God is. And it's so, but it's so different. It's such a different God than it is because, um, anyways, I'm not going to go into that, but (laughs) I think it's so important to stay in the word and to know who God is and to know who you are, honestly, because he tells us who we are in the Bible all the time. And if you don't stay in the word and you don't stay reading his word, you're not going to ever know who you are and who he is and why he loves you. Well, exactly. And it's like every single time that you're feeling like you're being attacked by lies from Satan, your biggest weapon is being able to go back to the truth and being able to know what God says about you. And so that's why it's, I think it's so, so important. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also important, like you said, to have a community to fall back on and tell you, like, no, no, those aren't true. That lie is not true. Like, go back in the word, do all that. And I think that's super important to have those people because we are human and we have insecurities and we have these things that we think about ourselves. And so I definitely think it's important that community is always there. You always have community. And luckily, I have a huge family that it works out. So even when I feel Oh my goodness. I yawn at least once a video. And I know my dad's going to text me after this and be like, why are you yawning? Because I just woke up. I'm not even tired. Anyways, I'm not the point. The point is community and staying in the word are, I think the two biggest things to fight the lies that Satan tells you. Yes. So I actually recently did a devotional, but it called armor of God by Priscilla Shire. And it, it was so good. And so one of my favorite quotes, the, the devotional is about like, a, it's a study on Ephesians and it's about how every day, like we wake up to a spiritual battle for our souls, but the Lord has already won the battle and he's already given us the tools to like prepare for attacks from the enemy. And so the quote is, Try not to say or do anything in response to your feelings of insecurity, fear, or really anything that is out of alignment with your true identity in Christ. You might be surprised how quiet you become. 
Mm. And so the reason that I really latched onto that quote is because Satan was attacking me through fear, through insecurity. He was attacking what my true identity was in Christ. And I found myself so like caught up in those lies and I, I was believing them. And so it's the daily choosing to act in accordance with your identity in Christ and the daily choosing to think in accordance with your identity in Christ that has really helped me get over the fear and get over that insecurity because the Lord says that I am beautifully and wonderfully made. The Lord says that he is my refuge and he will be there for me even when nobody else is. And so, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, I, there's a book called uh, get out of your head by Jenny Allen. And I don't know if you've I read love it. That book. Okay. I was about to say, because that's, a, it's a really good book. And um, I know my devotional too. do what she has a devotional with that book. Did you oh, that? I did not know that. It's really good. I need to look into that. I I'm on a reading cake right now. So I just wanted to, I got so many books for Christmas and I'm like, I'm going to try to read them all. Oh and gosh. I'm a super slow reader. So this is going to be interesting. I've been reading the same book for like three weeks now because I just can't three weeks is not that long I've been okay that I guess it's true but I sit and I can read a few pages at a time but then I start getting tired so that I have to like get up and do something I know it's ridiculous I have such a busy mind I got out I totally put us on a tangent though so you're saying Jenny Allen get out of your head oh yes no you're totally fine get out of your head I thought it was a super good book and um it's super encouraging especially if you or str- struggle with like those toxic thoughts and insecurities about yourself. And um, right. I know my friend Peyton Rose read that book and she absolutely loved it. And she had like sticky notes on like every page and she was annotating it. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's so good because we really need it. We really need those reminders. It's, it's nice also because I know the Bible is sometimes hard to like actually get into. And so it's nice to have those books that are faith-based, but also have anecdotes and examples and things that you can use in a better, an easier way of understanding it. And Jenny Allen does such a great job because I saw her at Passion and her session was my absolute favorite. And so I loved it and I was absolutely moved by it. And so I'm I'm like on a Jenny Allen kick too, because I'm like, oh my gosh, I love her. I love her. She's so funny and so genuine. And I'm just like, yeah, like a freaking fresh start kind of feeling. Um, Anyways, (laughs) I got on a kick too. Um, But I'm, I'm really glad I got to talk to you. I feel like I haven't, we haven't talked in like forever, seriously. Yeah, it's been a long time. Um, But I'm super glad I, about just, everything I think like you said you said so many good things I'm trying to like think of all of them but you know just how important community is how you know important it is to know that you don't have to be perfect to come to Christ and um if anything that's the best time when you realize you're not perfect is the best time to be like you know what I'm not perfect but there is somebody out there that is and, and the one you need Christ the most. Right, exactly. Like, like I was talking about where he can be the strength in your weakness, where you can see him showcase his power. Right, yeah. I love it. Um, You did a really cool internship pretty recently. So why don't you talk to us about that? Oh, my gosh. So there's a nonprofit in Fort Worth called The Net. And so it is dedicated to fighting against human trafficking. And they're baby nonprofit is called Worthy Co. And so that's a nonprofit social enterprise where they employ women who are victims of sex trafficking or survivors of sex trafficking. And so it's a retail shop that makes candles, jewelry, and everything is handmade by the survivors. And so during that internship, I met so many strong women who have faith in the Lord, regardless of how terrible and how awful their circumstances were. Right. And 
getting to meet so many strong and empowered women was so inspiring to me because so often I can like fall victim to just like sitting in my situation and not trying to find a way out, you mm-hmm. know, just like sitting in my sadness or sitting in my anxiety and and just seeing how those women never never lost hope was really, really inspiring. Yeah. I I think that's so cool. That's one of our biggest issues that I think is so sickening to think about just trafficking and it's so sad. And um but I yeah. love sorry, sorry, go ahead. And the misinformation about trafficking going around in the media is not helping at all. Because like Trafficking is not like getting kidnapped and like that kind of stuff. Trafficking happens when like you start getting most, okay, most people, most women who are trafficked, like think of their trafficker as like their boyfriend. Mm. And most prostitutes are women who are being trafficked. And most women who are being trafficked get arrested for prostitution. And so there's just this misinformation in the media that like, oh my gosh, someone's like going to follow me to my car in Walmart at 1 a.m. And like, they're going to kidnap me and then I'm going to be put in human trafficking. Like that accounts, that kind of situation accounts for like 1% of trafficking. Like the other 99% is like men or women getting close to a young girl who is already in a bad situation, who is has a bad home life, who is being sexually abused at home. And so she is trying to do anything to get out of that situation. And so when they find someone older who is willing to like, oh, like he's gonna like buy clothes for me. He's gonna get food for me. Oh, he said that I can move in because my family life is terrible. And so like I can move in with him and like start over my life and be so much better and like they make all these false promises and people people get trafficked by people they know not by and something that's really crazy to me is that women who have been trafficked don't even know that they've been trafficked because of all of the misinformation in the media Wow. Like some of my bosses were telling me that they would talk to um, like some of the survivors, some of the like amazing women, and they would be describing what trafficking is. And then they would say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happens to girls. That's so sad. Not even realizing that it happened to them. Oh, wow. And so just all of that misinformation is, is making it so hard for us as a nation, us as a community to be able to fight against human trafficking effectively and like to make a real difference. Yeah. I, I didn't even know any of that. That's so crazy because it, it's so crazy that something so negative and something so evil of this world can be turned to good because in, in my mind, it's so hard to wrap your head around like as a, as somebody who's a sister and just has empathy for others honestly I can't even imagine that happening to anybody in my family and I would have an anger unlike any other and so I mean even just thinking about it and so I can't even imagine being able to use that and use that to help I I would understand wanting to help others but I think I would probably somehow end up in prison if that happened to my little sister's and I mean that in like, uh, not, hor- and that sounds like really not Christian like, but honestly, I mean, thinking genuinely, I would do everything on this planet to find them. And it's just, it's so crazy to me how, how positive you can make a negative situation. Because I mean, even two episodes ago with Kate, she had cancer and she turned it into a nonprofit organization. Wow. And so, I thought that was, that was so cool. And I was just like, I don't even know how, but then sitting here and listening to that and making things and selling them and turning it like, that's such a cool 
that's such a cool way to turn such a negative situation. Right, right. Yeah, that's just, well, I'm super happy that you talked about that because I think that's definitely something that everybody should know and I didn't even know it. So I definitely think that's something that will be good information for everybody listening and probably weren't expecting a sex trafficking talk, but I think that it's something that needs to be brought up and you talked about it. But I really appreciate you coming on and I really am glad that you took the time to be on here. So thank you so much. And before we say goodbye to everybody, do you have anything left you would like to say or a little final word? (laughs) I think just so often, just my little last piece of advice, so often we can think like, oh my gosh, following Jesus is such a sacrifice. Like he calls us to deny ourselves and he calls us to like face persecution and be the odd one out. But like, if you learn anything from this podcast, it's that sacrifice is so worth it. And you will find so much love, so much joy, so much peace, and so much acceptance in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so if you are struggling to take that first step of starting a relationship with God, I just want to challenge you to take that first step of faith. Because I I, one time I heard a pastor say, you're never going to have walk on water moments if you don't step out of the boat. Mm, That's good. I know. I just encourage everyone listening to step out of the boat in faith because the Lord will be there for you. The Lord will be there to provide for you. The Lord will be there to catch you. And he loves you so, 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 so much. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for being on here. That was some good wisdom right there. And um, I really appreciate it. And everybody who's watching, thank you so much for watching and, um, and listening. And I really appreciate it. And I hope that everybody has a good week and just uses what they've learned to help others and go share your story. Cause I think it's super important. Everybody needs to go share their story. And because you never know who's struggling that would benefit from hearing your story. But anyways, go hug your buddies today and be a light for the Lord and everything you do and be the reason someone's going to stay. Bye guys. Bye.